So joining us will be the head of development at Trezor, Hinek Yina. Welcome, Hinek. Hello, everyone. There are over 200 million people in Bitcoin as of now, not including people using ETFs. And only 25 million people who hold Bitcoin tightly, who have the private keys, who are the real uh, Bitcoin owners. Probably most of these people are using that only as a small portion of their, their funds. Uh, I don't have proper data for this, but most of the recommendation that I was able to find was recommending from 1% to 5% of the portfolio. So if those people are following these recommendations, they don't have that much Bitcoin. I'm not saying that small amount of Bitcoin being held with the individuals, but even with this, uh, with this amount of people, we are currently starting uh, having high fees environment already, and we don't know what, what will come, come next. If we assume that people will make one transaction a month, which is definitely not sufficient anyway, there's a place only for 20 million people, actually less than that, but just to keep the number simple. And I think that we need to do much more. We need to scale, or I would love to scale Bitcoin to everyone, not only to anyone. So on this chart, you, you, you can see the, the scale of the, of the scaling itself, the number of people that are using Bitcoin and number of transactions. And with Bitcoin, we are able to currently cover only a very small portion of that. These numbers are in logarithms, so every next step is much harder than the previous one. So today I would like to walk you through with few proposals, there are many more, and in upcoming months, and in recent months, there, there are still appearing more and more, more ideas, so let's go for it. I have to start obviously with lightning. Uh, whenever t I talk about scaling, most people tell me like, hey, what's up? We already have Lightning, problem solved, done. Let's go, go next. Lightning is cool. It has a decent privacy. It can be fairly cheap uh, when you already have it set, set up, open channels. So when you have channel, you can, you can make endless number of transactions. But it's... It's not sufficient for everyone. We still need to keep opening channels. We need to uh, keep closing those channels. Your wealth is not stable. You are getting rich or getting poor. And even if, let's imagine that once a month you, you get some, some pay uh, and you need to change, rebalance the, the, the channel. So at the end, we still are having the same number of people who can use the lightning properly if they are using it for every purchases and basically as their main money. One of the improvements of Lightning Network is called channel factories. There's not much development regarding this idea, but just like with Lightning Network, we are able to throw all the transactions that are not important anymore. With channel factories, you are going uh, one level above that, and you can keep throwing uh, the outdated uh, channels. However, the most difficult part here is to coordinate the people. So it's not about technical issue, it's more about finding the way how to coordinate the very same people to, to create a new channels. Many of you probably heard already about ARC, and ARC is doing this part better, because you don't need to coordinate the very same people, you just need to coordinate some people within, uh, let's say, one month probably. ARC is not live either, but they are also already nice, nice prototypes, so you can play with it on, on Liquid. 
liquid test net as, as of now. The biggest issue with Arc is that you as an Arc service provider need to put a lot of money to, to make it work. Basically, whenever someone is sending money through Arc, the Arc service provider has to pay these, uh, these funds. So let's say Alice and Bob, as usually, are transferring one Bitcoin back and forth. And for, the, all, for each of these transactions, Arc service provider has to be able to lock one Bitcoin for, for each transaction. So not that many people are able to have enough money to run these Arc service providers, probably, or it will be, uh, again, more expensive. But we will see. It's not, not ready yet, and it's evolving every day. On the other hand, Liquid doesn't have problem with liquidity, since almost nobody is using that. Uh, Liquid is kind of copy of the of the Bitcoin itself. It works very very similar manner. Each block is minted uh, precisely each minute, so it's predictable. Since it is kind of centralized, uh, Liquid can scale to to Visa parameters, so the blocks can be increased because not that many people need to to agree with that. And you just put your Bitcoin into some smart contract, and if at least one of the Federation members agree, you will be able to get this uh, Bitcoin out of that, which is not bad, but it's not great either. There are 15 functionaries, including Blockstream, and the biggest issue from my perspective with Liquid is that uh, when five of these functionaries are able to to come to agreement, they are technically capable of stealing all the funds after some time. So this is, this is not secure enough. Maybe that's the reason why most people are still not using that, even though it's very cheap. And it's, it has some other nice, nice features. You can have Lightning Network on top of Liquid, and you can, you can transfer, you can bridge it with Lightning on uh, Bitcoin itself. Another idea is called Citria. There are many other ideas as of now that, that work on similar principle. And with Citria, you, you are storing mo all of the data on Bitcoin blockchain. So whenever you want, you should be able to calculate the current state. However, there's a lot of smart algorithms to make proper compression. And it's not trustless. However, you, it's, they call it trust minimized. So you need only one of, let's say, 1,000 of uh, entities to be honest with you and to give your money back on the Bitcoin. However, this will be probably kind of expensive to, to pick out from Citria. The biggest issue with Citria, again, from my perspective, is that it doesn't exist yet but it's changing every day. And there are many other proposals with nice logos, so we will probably see more of them in upcoming months. The one is, that is more settled is RGB, or let's say prime chain. And they are going with, into quite opposite direction. They don't need to have big blocks at all. Uh, their focus is client-side validation. Therefore, we don't need a Bitcoin blockchain to store all those data. People can be responsible for bearing their data. So you, as a user of Prime Chain, uh, can have not only keys with which you are able to sign your transactions, but also you need to have proofs of existence of your coins and proof of absence of their spending. So it's getting more complicated. You will need more entities like storage providers. So the incentives might vary. There might be some, again, security uh, holes. But again, we will see this one is still not, still not alive. What is alive and quite frequently discussed, even on the previous panel, is Cashew and Fediment. It's like having a nice banker. 
where anyone can become a banker, again, not everyone. So it, it scales on top of Lightning Network. When you are running Lightning Node, you can provide this access to your node basically to anyone you want or even to many of people. The biggest difference between Cashew and Fedimint is that Fedimint is uh, handled by multisig. So it's not one entity, but it can be more of them. Another nice thing about Cashew and Fedimint is that you can, you can do automated runs of those bankers. So if some of them are cheating, you, you can algorithmically attack those bankers. You can double check whether they are using fractional reserves. And it shouldn't be feasible to, to be fraudulent. But again, many new, uh, more tools need to be developed to, to see it in, in, in real life. But it's a tool that you can use immediately. Even though it's not self-custody, it still can be kind of a very good trade-off for, for current, current situation. Another idea is called Mercury Layer. With Mercury Layer, you can grab one of your UTXO, do some magic with the blind, blind server, and being able to share this UTXO later on without any additional costs. You are not able to change the amount of this UTXO. You create a coin, and then you can share it. Uh, but then it's for free. So you can accumulate uh, those UTXOs. You can make various denominations. For example, use the Wabi Sabi denominations or the banknotes uh, denominations as you are used to. Theoretically, you could even transfer the whole Lightning channels one day. But we are not there yet. I'm afraid that this solution has another security holes, so it's not, not perfectly secure. But again, Mercury layer could provide another nice, nice trade-off. And it brings me to another idea, which I called last mile. And, and that's that you wouldn't have to maybe do any transaction at all. Technically, you would make transaction but don't broadcast it to the whole world, but only share it with the recipient. And to prevent you from creating another one to steal the funds, you would give the recipient different transaction, which is not beneficial for none of, none of you. Again, in this proposal, there are many, many holes, but it can cover another part of the requirement for the scaling. So that's our these eight very high level ideas and I would like to add few few more improvements. Like the very, very small part and not many people are working on that. I think you would be able to count them on, on one on finger with fingers on one hand is the CISA or or which is shortcut for cross input signature aggregation. With CISA, if it will be ever implemented in uh, block, uh, Bitcoin, you could aggregate uh, signatures of your inputs into one. That's the case of full aggregation, where the co coordination is required. But it's not a problem if you are the one entity who is doing the, the signing, or when you are putting more transactions into one. With the full aggregation, when we assume the average single man transaction, it would, could bring uh, savings roughly 10%. In case of half aggregation, you don't need to interact with the people. And it could be even simpler to, to reach the half aggregation. And the saving is not, not bad, that bad at all. I know when we want to scale for billions, this doesn't help us a lot, but it can buy us some, some time. And with the half aggregation, you could do that as a miner. So you grab all the transactions that are available and you, you squeeze them into smaller data required for the block. Of course, we always have a chance to, to increase the block size. Even though it's kind of taboo, 
I think we might open this this topic again in the future, but we are still not, not ready to do that. There's a plenty of ideas. I didn't mention all of them, definitely. So I think we have we have still time, but if needed, we might buy, buy some time with, with the block size increase in the future. So that's basically it. Here's my subjective overview, how I perceive those proposals. From the security perspective, the steady and the most safe one is Bitcoin, of course, on the right. And then you can play with the trade-offs, what is important for you, what, what you like. I don't know if something of those proposals work, will work at the end. Maybe some combination of it, maybe we will find another solutions. My point that I would like to, to mention here is that that scaling is very important. We need to, to keep <laughs> searching for a solution to make it, to make it predictable so, so that we can then actually onboard people if we know, know how. So thank you for, for your attention and join us with, with this movement of making Bitcoin accessible to everyone, not only anyone. Thank you.